Hi everyone, I'm Nick. And I'm Andrea. And we are Project, Project Portugal. Portugal. Welcome back. Firstly, uh, we have to say a big thank you to B and Theo from the Indie Projects for uh, their big shout out and all the subscribers we have has been amazing. And thanks for all your helpful comments. This week we're going to show you our honey harvest and uh, I'm going to answer some questions, lots of questions we've had about the Moongate and how I built it. See these things. <laughs> All these things. Yeah, the bees are not happy we take of the honey, but uh, we give them nice food back and some medicine against the varroa mites. And uh, they're actually going to get ready for maybe some fall honey. Because huh? yeah. uh, Nick and Andrea live in a very nice area. Good, huh? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant.
Evie. This is Kuhn and Evie, our bee experts who have come Aww. here to help us do some harvest of honey today. Uh, if you could just explain a little bit of what you've done. Yeah, so uh, it's been a year. Um, you guys bought bees from us. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we came here monthly or here sometimes every two weeks or sometimes more, more space in between. Yeah. But you managed uh, to, to build from two hives to seven healthy hives like we saw. They still have uh, eight brood frames, six brood frames, so very strong beehives. Uh, the honey here is this year not so good because we had a bad spring. Right? We had uh, cold spring and then uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, but still, they managed to, to get to two supers, two extra supers with the honey. And then we take some uh, honey frames inside of the brood boxes. They're actually not going to use. Um, and let, let the honey stay for next year, so it's better to take it out. But just only the extra frames. Uh, we, we took in mind to keep the, enough food for the bees in there, of course. Uh, we also give them some treatment and, uh, for the varroa and uh, some food back. Because when we steal honey, we have to give them some food back, of course. Yeah. And now we're going to go uh, to our farm. And uh, we have like a very traditional uh, honey slinger. Yeah. And uh, for this is perfect to, to make your own honey. So I think yeah, we're going to have some. We will see later on how many kilos in the farm. Wow, thanks a lot so guys. This is uh, footage of me cutting off the cappings of the frames. So all the cappings and the honey that comes off with them inevitably is going to be uh, collected in a tray. And we will be using these to make some mead. These cappings are very light in colour uh, because they're quite fresh and they're generally used in cosmetics. Later on you'll see the difference in colour um, when Andrea talks about the harvest. The older beeswax from the frames we've cleaned etc is a lot darker than the new cappings which you'll see later. So here we have a centrifugal uh, honey extractor which I'm playing around with. Um, first time I've ever used one. Been very well instructed by uh, Kuhn and Evie and uh, it's just fascinating to watch. So this uh, extractor takes six of the frames from the honey supers or three of the larger frames from the brood box. And here it comes, the moment we've been waiting for. Uh, Andrew's just about to open the tap and release our first year's honey harvest. And it's really nice and thick and a beautiful dark amber color. So the fruit of our girls labour is here in front of us. We have over 22 kilos of beautiful dark honey. It's very tempting to just eat it as it is, but we can do that later. And we also had a couple of kilos of honey on the comb as well. And that is absolutely beautiful. The wax, you can actually eat the wax, but any wax that um, we do have, we can render down. This top wax is from the cappings that you saw us take off at Kuhn and Evie's. And this is older wax. And here in the background, I have our honey and blackberry mead. So when it's really hot, we like to do this for the chickens. Them nice and cool. Yeah. 
where they live and it's fully insulated and that's what it's called inside. We've had lots of questions uh, last week's video about how I built the moon gate here. So what uh, I'll try and do, we don't have any video footage as such, but uh, I've got some stills, so I'll just do a brief explanation of how we, how we built it, basically. So we start with um, the foundation stone and the bottom of the wall was the first thing we built. And then uh, from, from then on, I made some formwork. Um, half a semicircle, a semicircle, half a circle, uh, which was two meters across. Yeah, and uh, I then set the formwork in here to the angle because it's on a curved wall as well, so it was a bit tricky to get everything in the right sort of place. But we got there in the end. Um, basically, then you build your your stones or your wall up against the formwork, following the the circle shape, obviously. So the formwork you see in this picture uh, I made from some chipboard with a nice laminate on which we found at the property so it's virtually cost free. I cut the circle with a, a jigsaw, marked it out properly and then the, the edge of the formwork uh, we used some thin ply just to stop any ingress of the mortar used. We later reused the formwork to create the circle for the mosaic. After a few days, let everything dry off and go nice and hard, and then take the formwork away, turn it upside down, um, support it. You'll see from another photograph that uh, the top piece of formwork in place, and then basically just one either side, work your way up. So this is the formwork inverted uh, to form the top part of the arch. Uh, you can see I've propped it from both sides to give it some lateral support, and now you can see the other side of the formwork so there's just some um, thin ply bent to just to give some support to the inside of the arch shape. You can also see that um, this is one of Boris's favourite spots. Next week we'll be going through the process of how I've been laying the calzada. And we'll be laying some in these areas here just before the moon gate. So bye for now guys and see you in the next video. Bye. bye. Two, two thousand and three, two thousand and four. Oh, didn't see you there.